Welcome back. Governor-elect Jerry Brown will face a massive $25 billion budget shortfall next year, twice as large as legislative leaders were anticipating, according to a new projection from the nonpartisan Legislative Analyst's Office. The reasons for California's budget problem are threefold. Tax rates are slated to drop next year. The federal government will be giving far less money to states. And this year's budget included many questionable assumptions that didn't come true. Of the $25 billion deficit, $19 billion is projected for the new fiscal year that begins in July of 2011. The remaining $6 billion is due, due to overly optimistic assumptions that were made in the current budget plan. The latest deficit is several billion dollars larger than last year's problem, which led to the longest budget delay in state history, with the state budget not being enacted until October 8th, 100 days into the fiscal year. So, uh, Senator Cogdell, you were the former Senate Minority Leader. You've been involved in these budget negotiations. Why can't we balance our state budget? Well, it's, uh, I, I think at, at its heart, certainly with what we've seen happen to our economy over the last decade, really, uh, when I ran for office, I often joked that uh, the, the budget had a $12 billion surplus, and it was interesting because the comments and the discussions at the, the candidates' forums were about what were you going to do with that surplus? How were you going to spend it? Uh, and shortly after that, the energy crisis hit about uh, 30 days after I was elected, and it's been going downhill ever since that as it relates to the budget and the, uh, the imbalance between spending and, and revenues. And certainly spending has increased substantially uh, over the, the last decade or had up until the last couple of years. Uh, and again, and a lot the of budgets that you negotiated, those budgets came down. They did. For the first time in the history of the state of California, the state spent less that year than it did uh, the year before. We made $16 billion in cuts, and those were balanced against $12 billion in tax increases on a temporary basis. Those are what will expire next year and really, uh, again, what's reflected in that $25 billion deficit that's being projected. Um, but again, I think it's a situation where, again, we have created a, a spending environment that's much more active than it was historically. Uh, and you could argue there are a lot more needs than, than uh, we had historically. Couple that with an economy and the downturns that have taken place there, and the revenues just aren't coming in like uh, we've projected over the last two or three years. Well, speaking of that, I, I want to talk to Congressman Costa about uh, this issue about these rosy assumptions that were made in this last year's budget. They assumed that we were going to balance the budget by receiving billions of dollars uh, in federal funding, a plan that was considered wildly optimistic before the government even signed the budget plan. Sure enough, the LAO reports that the state will receive $3.5 billion less than expected. Since <clears throat> no politician wants to overtly raise taxes and no citizen wants their programs cut, Aren't we going to continue to see more of these accounting gimmicks to, gimmicks to balance state and federal budgets? Well, the state's a different situation, and that has been, unfortunately, part of the uh, problem that we face. But on the federal level, um, you know, the size of government for four decades has ranged between 17 and 20 percent of our GDP. And when our deficits have been uh, very small, it's been when our revenues and our expenditures have been 17, 18 percent of GDP, and they've they've narrowed the gap. Right now, our expenditures, uh, as a result of this financial meltdown we had two years ago and a host of unprecedented activities we took to try to s stop the hemorrhaging and avoid, and we came this close to being in a worldwide depression, to avoid that depression, uh, was expenditures now that are 24 percent of our GDP, and the revenues f in our federal government are 16 percent of our GDP. That's unsustainable. And that's why this budget uh, recommendation, this commission, bipartisan commission that came out with recommendations two days ago, I think is a real start toward getting re uh, real about fixing the federal budget deficit. We have to get our financial house in order. Well, I want to ask a question. It's, it's a simple question, but it's probably going to be a complex answer. Um, we've only got about a minute or so. So you've got to solve this budget problem, this $25 billion deficit hole in about a minute. Um, can we cut our way to a solution here? Well, I think it could be done. It's, it's a matter of whether or not the state and the uh, people are willing to do um, What kind live of cuts the, are we, we talking about? Well, again, I mean, you could, you could go across the board theoretically. You could make some pretty substantial additional cuts, but we've already made substantial cuts over the last two years, and, and certainly the people are seeing, starting to feel the impact of that. But again, when you look at the results of the last election, it's very obvious. They don't want fees increased. They don't want their taxes increased. They want us to live within our means. They still don't believe we are running this government in an efficient way. Can, so. can, can, we, can we cut our way out of this? I think we Alone. need to. Uh, no. No, we can't. I think we need to cut, Mark, 
and we need to cut as much as we can, and we need to do it up front so that the voters know uh, that, that they get the government that they're willing to pay for. Right now, they think they can have it both, get the services without paying for it. Okay, well, when we come back, we'll talk about the T word, taxes. If we can't find a way to balance the state's budget through cuts alone, will new taxes have to be part of a budget fix? That conversation when we return. This is The Matter Report.